Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls 3. We've got something that's pretty exciting to do today, and it uh, requires us to backtrack a little from High Lord Wolner's room to the Rope Bridge. Remember the Rope Bridge? It's where we plunge that procession of skeletons to their deaths, but it also serves another role if you wait just a second. And, uh, after a moment or two, the collapsed bridge acts as a secret ladder down to uh, an optional area. I find this to be a really creative and clever way to conceal a ladder that ends up leading to this secret optional area. Uh, and as soon as we step foot down here, there's one of these big fire demons that we last fought side by side with Sigurd. But he's not here this time, so uh, let's call in reinforcements. I'm going to get my big bro, the Mimic, to help me out. Oh, I actually wish the fire demon didn't follow me up here. Because this could have been a much more fair fight. Uh, the mimic usually wins. He, he busts out that Muay Thai and just kicks the shit out of the fire demon. Every now and then, the fire demon will beat him, though. It's like a 9-1 matchup. But if he... Ah, if the fire demon follows me up here like this... Maybe he'll fall... Ah, nah. If the fire demon follows you up here, then, uh... His, his AI and his pathing act pretty weird. Like he doesn't retaliate until he hits at least the stairs. So he didn't get a chance to fight back against the Mimic. That skeleton's gonna respawn. I saw in his eyes. Ooh, how the hell did I escape that? Pure luck. The reason that I knew that the skeleton was gonna respawn is uh, a bunch of people actually told me this handy little tip about their eyes. They have a visual cue when they're gonna respawn. Uh, their eyes glow blue. Soul of a demon. Demons were born of the chaos flame, but the flame has not survived, and the demons are a dying race. Ooh, the chaos flame has gone out, and there are there's nary a demon left. Oh, all of these skeletons are gonna respawn. Yeah, now that so, now that a bunch of people have pointed that out to me, it really feels extremely obvious. Maybe I can make it to the bonfire before they catch up. Nope, I saw the gleam of his sword from off camera behind me, or just barely uh, not off camera. Eh, it was just you though. Sometimes a bunch of them catch up, and it's just a headache. Uh, real quick. There is this, the Old Sage's Blindfold and the Witch's Ring. The Tire of Pyromancers of the Great Swamp, particularly favored by Old Sages. The large blindfold blocks out unnecessary light, allowing one to observe a pyromancy's true essence. The flame reveals all, and obscures all. The Witch of Isolith and her daughter, scorched by the flame of chaos, taught humans the art of pyromancy and offered them this ring. Every pyromancer, every pyromancer, is familiar with a parable that tells of the witches espousing the need to fear the flame and teaching the art of pyromancy to men in hopes they might learn to control it. Uh, it's a, a ring that greatly, greatly boosts the power of pyromancies. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. And Smoldering Lake. Let's see if we can get a better view. Ah! That third arrow. So there's a huge ballista up there. You can see up in the upper right. It fires volleys of three enormous arrows at you at a time. There is a visual cue if you're looking directly at it. You can see the arrow coming at you. There's also a pretty easy to pick up on audio cue. And there's not one. <coughs> Sorry, well, there's not one, but two crystal lizards in this honeycomb leading off of the main smoldering lake bed. Oop. Second time's the charm. Good. So the thing about the chaos plane fading out explains the stray demon on the bridge from Farron Keith. The one that was all sodden, their time, the demon's time has passed. And this would be Horus the Hush. 
You got, you, uh, if you paid attention, you could see this area while you were descending the rope ladder. So if you happen to come down here and find Horus, and then go back to Henri, remember how she asked, uh, if we had seen Horus? Well, if you tell her where Horus is, she'll come down here to try to console him, and he will murder her. He appears to, uh, have not actually gotten separated from her by a trap. My guess is he came down here of his own volition to hollow out and not be around Anri to kill her. The medicinal pellet made from crushed insects, the yellow type temporarily boosts lightning damage absorption. The Grey Wardens of Karthus use these to repel a great sandworm. The worm tumbled into the catacombs and proceeded to dominate its new home in the smoldering lake. That time they didn't spell smoldering with a U. Interesting. I'm sure we're not going to come up against that sandworm too much. Sure, that's not going to be a thing. Uh, the Llewellyn shield that Horus dropped uh, doesn't really have much of a significant item description. We want to try to bait this crab back here because there is a cliffside overhang that blocks the line of sight from the ballista so you can fight this crab in safety. Alternatively, you can run by these crabs because I know you saw that there were a lot of them. And they they have that Lord of Cinder Ember effect on them. All of these crabs link the fire. <laughs> nice little visceral attack. This isn't a popular opinion, but I think that Smoldering Lake is a really underappreciated level. There's the initial descent, and I already said that I think how you get here is cool. It's not as elaborate as stuff like the Painted World or how you get to Kanehurst, but there is something like that, like the Painted World uh, secret and the Kanehurst secret in this game. So, it's not like this secret area is in lieu of having something way more elaborate and cool. Um, so this is more of a, like, a less hidden but still somewhat obscured optional level. The lake bed full of, of dancing embers is really pretty. And at first, it looks empty. But you could clearly see the boss fog in plain view, which makes you curious. And then all of those item glows drawing you forward out of that, the cave that you start in. And into the open of the lake bed. And it's all so that you just, you step out and get wrecked with the arrows from the giant ballista. If anything, my only criticism is that you hear the ballista before you actually get the chance to step out onto the lake. So they reveal their hand a little bit too early. If, it, if they waited to start firing the ballista until you made it out to that first item, that closest item to the bonfire, ooh, it would be a lot more effective. And that wall crumbles when shot with the arrow. Uh, as did the floor back there. So they use all of this visual trickery to get you curious and to draw you out and then pelt you with these <laughs> huge refrigerator-sized arrows. And that's cool enough as is. Like, you already had the descent and then that trap. Then... Your curiosity is immediately met with that really heart-pounding danger. And if you just look around for a second, you could see a couple of things. Like, you could see the big crags that offer you safety. Um, if you look towards the ballista, you could see the arrows to time your rolls. You, you just... Oh, we got more floating bullshit. Yeah, more floaties. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, you, even if you're just listening carefully, you can hear the audio cue of the, um, the, the, the arrow from the ballista firing. So you can learn to time your roll that way. And you can just blind dodge like I did a few times. You have that little honeycomb with Horus. Then you come out and you, you keep going and you panic at first because you see no less than five or six of those crabs and uh, that dread washes over you. 
and you think, how the hell do I deal with that and the ballista? But again, if you just take cover for a second, observe your surroundings, you see that the ballista doesn't have line of sight with that cliff overhang. So it gives you a safe spot to fight from. Or you can run past if you have the timing for the arrows down. So you have options to deal with that. I think this room is a really good example of good enemy placement too with the blind corners and the item that draws your attention forward so you run blindly into the room if you're not being careful. And then you get ambushed from both sides around those, uh, those, uh, tight corners. And, uh, that... Oh, hey, Dark Spirit. Well, fuck him. I'm gonna read this tome. He won't get it to me in time. A pyromancy tome from Isolith containing pyromancies of the witches. Give to the old master pyromancer to learn chaos pyromancies of Isolith. Chaos pyromancies manipulate lava and birth all later forms of pyromancy. I am so happy just to see the word Isolith. Which is bizarre because that's the worst level in any Soulsborne game. I fucking hated Isolith, but I love the lore of it. Ugh. <sighs> Power of Nostalgia. Oh, are you gonna be, uh, just an honorable little dude? Okay. I, uh, I am in the way of the blue right now. So sooner or later, I'm gonna have a buddy. Here he comes! Yeah, let me just buy some time. Oh, I hope... Oh, hey, it's Mike! <laughs> Oh, that's how it's gonna be. I'm just sitting here trying to greet you. I hope... Oh, no. Oh. Look what he's rocking. Okay, let's get him. Get him. Get him. I wanted to buy him time because I was hoping he would spawn behind and backstab him. Oh, you're gonna roll right into me. Get out of here. Get out of here. Don't invade me again. Thank you, Mike. You did it. You did it. You're the best, man. I love Blue Sentinels. They're the cops that come to protect you when you get invaded. <laughs> uh, a bonfire, I believe, was the Old King's Antechamber. Which kind of hints at uh, someone we're going to find in this area. That is one of many, 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 many illusory walls. Take a look at the ceiling, and then just ignore danger and um, worry about consequences later, because who cares? They all drop down kind of prematurely. If you just run through that, I don't think that any of them can land on your head. Uh, these molten slimes are a little bit more dangerous than the normal ones, but it's no big deal. So first of many illusory walls. And we'll continue on from the bonfire room. Having already gotten the Isolith Pyromancy Tome. Let's... One thing I'm not entirely sure of is what the significance of the Gru being down here are. Because I always thought the Gru were... Oh, nice! We got the Rotten Gru car Curved Sword. Which is actually kind of more of a dagger. A uh, poisonous dagger. Crude Half Rotten Great... Uh, not Great Sword, Curved Sword. Choice weapon of the Blunted Horn Grues, descendants of the Acolytes of Farron Keep, Ransom Blades drenched in rotten bullshit, blah blah blah. Yeah, so I'm curious about what they're doing down here in an area that is ostensibly highly related to demons and filled with demons. I always thought they were abyss influence or. Mm, unsure about that. Might just be kind of random. Uh, if you don't clear those enemies out before you go after that ember, they patrol down the hallway. And, uh, you don't want to get locked into fighting in that hallway because one of those was a pyromancer and they use toxic mist. And it'll just fill up the whole volume of the hallway. Looky what we have here. That's the corpse of a dead Capra demon. I've always loved the Capra demon's design. I always thought it was really cool, if not for if not for that horrendously annoying boss fight in DS1. Uh we ain't done with cool stuff from the past though. Not by a long shot. 
I really like this area just for the flittering, dancing embers all over the place. I think that's a nice particle effect. Look at what we have here! Holy shit! Remember those from the demon ruins? Oh yeah, another one. Uh, roll. Uh, I think the Black Knight Shield is gonna put in overtime in this level because it is fire, fire, fire all the time and this thing blocks out 80 plus percent of fire damage. Oh, hey. Now, let's take another look around this room. What do we have stacked up in the corner? But piles of dead Taurus demons. Taurus demons, Capra demons. We had that fire demon before. And back here, a black knight. Remember why the black knights are black? They were scorched by the flames of chaos. And their eternal duty was to fight back the tides of demons. And in the end, it looks like they kinda won. The chaos Ah, the Black Knight Sword! Yeah, 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 yeah! Oh, this, this level is a giant nostalgia trip. Chaos Flame is going out, or has gone out, and there's not much left of demons. What's really horrific about this level, the way the corpses are piled up, it looks like the, as the flame faded, they eventually just dropped. Like they could no longer carry on, and they just dropped dead. Unless that one lone black knight did all of this on his own. Let's, uh, let's deal with some of these rats before we move on. Should be one more, shouldn't there? Oh well. Another illusory wall. Over here to the right, there is a drop-off that leads you to the ne the next lowest floor. With a giant rat that you can see. Quailana Pyromancy Tome. Pyromancy Tome of Quailana containing her unique spells. These pyromancies can only be taught by a female pyromancy master. Give to a female pyromancy master and learn Quailana's pyromancies. Quailana, the sole surviving witch of Izalith, once accepted a human pupil, but after the pupil moved on, she never took another. Look at the icon for this. It is a tome wrapped in a gold-hemmed robe. Like the gold-hemmed robe that you find uh, near the altar behind Ceaseless Discharge. Uh, it's the robe that the sisters, the daughters of the witch of Izalith, wore. And then we have this. This corpse huddled in a dying embrace with, um, that's the fair lady from Dark Souls 1. And that corpse is implied to be Quilana. Oh. Finally reunited in death as the chaos flame went out. That's potent stuff. Uh, as is this fashion soul's atrocity. Good god. It's the worst it's ever been right now. Fashion souls is not on point. But, it's okay. But for selves with... I might not survive this anyway. Especially not if you hit me or get in my way. No! That's a lot of wasted time. Luckily, I can chug Sunny D to ward off all of these lava burns. Oh, well, we got all the items. Even if I die, I have my Ring of Sacrifice on, so it's okay. If I would stop getting caught up on slimes, I probably would have made it out of there. It's possible to do that. Uh, so that is max fire resist that I could get at this point in the game, along with Flash Sweat and a Red Bug pellet to increase fire resistance. Ugh. Still wasn't quite enough. Luckily, you can chug Estus now while you're uh, taking lava damage. And this should be close enough to where we left off. So instead of taking the illusory wall path that led down to where Quailana was, uh, we're instead going to take the stairs down. Now, we could have dropped down from, again, where the uh, Quailana and the Fair Lady were. To uh, plunging attack this giant rat, but I chose to take the direct approach. 
Now, there's another set of stairs leading down. We're doing a lot of descending, but instead of taking that, we are going to take an illusory wall. Uh, leading to a chest, but more importantly, leading to another illusory wall. How devious is that? Isolate staff. Let's deal with some of these basilisks before reading that description. How devious is that? An illusory wall behind an illusory wall? <laughs> I wish there was a third one. I wish there was a third. Just right there. They'll never do three. You would think. Oh, but they would. Then you start getting the, in, into the mind games. Oh, you need to be careful. Curse, uh, like in Dark Souls 1, will kill you immediately. It's not the Dark Souls 2 curse. It is the Dark Souls 2 Petrify. Uh, where was that? Ancient catalyst of the Witch of Isolith and her daughters used long before the dawn of chaos in a pyromancy. With the birth of the Chaos Flame, the Flame Witches were at once both sorcerers and shamans. Faith adjusts the power of sorceries cast using this catalyst. And the staff also seems to boost the power of dark sorceries. That seems to be a running theme. Is any kind of staff that has kind of a cross modifier? Like, anytime faith boosts sorceries or you have a staff that, that scales with faith or something like that, it always has some kind of reference or association with the dark or dark sorceries or something. Or things that are kind of taboo, like the uh, the Saints Biden that we picked up in the Cathedral of the Deep. We gotta be really careful with Night Slayer Sorry, because we don't have any kind of environmental hazards to uh, dupe him into running into. Maybe you could get him to run into the lava, but I don't know. Seems like it's more of a risk than it's worth. Uh, I do not have an ember up. I need to be careful for a sec. If he hits me once, I need to back up an ember. Hopefully he doesn't hit me at all. Okay. Good, this... yeah. That's safe. I realized, like, halfway through his health bar that I, if he uses a certain attack, like his weapon art, he can probably one-shot me. Even at full health, it might he might be able to. Uh, if he lands some kind of critical, like, uh, backstab or a guard break, I know he can. This twist, twisted sword, the heaviest of all ultra great swords, resembles Black Slate. Weapon said to belong to a traitor from long ago, Raim, was so heavy that it found no owner and became a forgotten relic. Great Shield made a Black Iron deeply feared for its association with Night Slayer soaring. Bullshit. Tarkus, Black Iron offers high defense, particularly effective at warding off fire. Uh, we already have something effective at warding off fire. But that's that's it for Sorig. That's it for him. The NPC for whom poise actually works properly. Let's put on... yeah. I, I want to make sure I don't have anything that lowers absorption on. Like, no Karthus Blood Ring, no Prisoner's Chain. Get Flash Sweat up, get our buffs on. Uh, this time I can actually do this, raise the shield because there's no elevation drop. And that will actually mitigate a ton of the fire damage leading up to the first item. So I definitely should not be dying on this run. Will take a lot of Estus to get through that safely, but... It's actually not that big of a deal. Can do that run pretty safely, get my prisoner's chain and my blood ring back on. And even though that dips my absorption into the negatives, um I will I will take an enormous amount of damage from hits. But hey, I can take it. I am again, I'm still a little bit over leveled for Smoldering Lake. The game is starting to catch up at this point, and by the time we get to the area after High Lord Wolner's bonfire, uh we'll be more or less on even ground. Either way, though, uh, the plan is to take very few hits at all to either block or roll through everything. So if I'm getting hit, I'm doing something wrong. 
words to live by in the Souls games. If you're blocked, you're doing. If you're block, if you're getting hit, you are doing something wrong. Oh, boy, look at the thing I did wrong. Oh, <laughs> uh, this room kind of sucks. That room might be kind of hellish right now, and you know what's over here? A bonfire. And we've actually made up the elevation difference now. By the way, by now you're probably wondering why I didn't take the stairs leading upwards from the Basilisk area. I went downstairs to fight Sorig and go through the lava and all that shit, but there was the stairs up. Um, I didn't not notice that. I'm leaving that for the very end, because uh, you're going to see why. Okay. That bonfire, by the way. The Demon Ruins Bonfire! Holy shit! That's where we are! We are, to like, as if everything else isn't the biggest. Obviously, we're here. We're in the Demon Ruins. I. What was even that? My, it took my brain a second to catch up with what happened. The fire demon... Standing on lava killed me slower than that. Oh yeah, I guess we, I went the wrong way, but... It's a pretty good glimpse of where we are. We're at the opposite end of the, the lake bed now. So this is kind of a shortcut to the boss door, so we don't have to cross through that giant open lake bed, uh, the plain from which the Ballista has a vantage point on you the whole way through. I... Jesus Christ, I need to not ever be in front of this thing. Oh, is that a, some kind of bird skull? Like, you can see it has this bony beak. They will occasionally summon those flame orbs which attack you independently. You can target them and destroy them. Uh, they will also disappear when the Conjurer dies, like that. They can also toss them pretty high up in the air, though. I'm surprised I've gotten this lucky with the other two on the ground level. Sometimes they like to toss them up to the ceiling, and you just get to deal with a bunch of flame orbs while you're fighting the one up here. <laughs> this room kind of sucks. Uh, I want to draw you. There's like four or five enemies here. And if they all get on you, this is just one of the most brutal sections. So, uh, pulling them apart and separating them is so paramount. Is this where you're- oh no, I, I tried to kick him, but I didn't do it in time. So he got a stab in. Yeah, enough time to lower his guard. I'm kind of liking these Drang Maces. I upgraded them just for variety's sake, but I'm actually kind of falling in love with them. I don't know if I'll keep using them, but... They have some very, very fun multi-hits. Thought there might be one more pathing around, but... Maybe he's around the corner? Okay, no, it was just the four of them. Either way, that room still... It, it can still get very, very hairy. If you don't separate the packs. Uh, this room has a blind corner. Remember these ones? These are the ones that jump into the air and try to grab you like so. Oh, this is not a spot to fight him. I decided to pull this one because there's another blind corner. And there's one of them waiting to grab you uh, on the left. So if you just charge forward seeing the one enemy and you charge him, uh, you get blindsided from the left. He grabs you immediately. Yep. He's just scripted to automatically grab whenever you get in line of sight. And speaking of effective ambushes, this is one of my favorite in the whole level. Because, again, shiny item draws your attention, but hey, that's so obvious. There's something on the ceiling. I'm not going to fall for that. But then... You bait this thing to fall down, and oh no, there's something else waiting around the blind corner. It's this... <laughs> it's this great little two-pronged ambush. 
I think when you're evaluating uh, the, the level design of a Souls game, you have to account for how creative they are with the enemy placements to ambush you. And then another big part of evaluating that is, could you have done something to mitigate the risk? Like, if you're playing smart and you're playing patiently and you're playing carefully, could you avoid the risk? Could you do something about it? Or is it just like... Or was there no chance to see it coming? And there's absolutely a chance to see all of that coming, all of that danger. Which I think makes it a very, very good ambush. Yeah. Backstabs are going to be especially important here, because I was in the middle of one of those lanes where the other fireballs could shoot at me, so I got the invincibility going. And now that it's just one on one, as long as I'm not in front of you, I don't get. That is horrifying. That's like a whole life bar gone in in 40 frames or less. Gone in 60 frames. Hmm, that's the one I like. The follow up uh, from the weapon art. It's now a really common thing for... Oh, that's a stray demon statue, that one. There are stray demons and Taurus demons. Get you out of the way. Uh, it's really common now for weapons to have full-blown combos. So you'll often go from a weapon art into like an R2 follow-up, and it's a totally unique move. It's crazy how much more complex the, the, the weapon move sets have become over time. They've, they've really ballooned out. And it's been a pretty steady increase in just the number of, of moves you get per weapon. Uh, unique moves. All the way from Demon Souls to Dark Souls 1 to DS2, where I think the combo thing became a lot more common. There were a couple of weapons like that in DS1 and Demons, but then DS2, they ramped it up a little bit. Bloodborne obviously added a new dimension with the transformation attacks and making L1 a really common thing. DS2 doesn't get a new cr enough credit now that I think about it because of power stancing, which was an amazing mechanic that I... I I'm upset they removed in DS3, to be honest. They Their attempt to replace it was to just give you a couple of weapons here and there that had their own built-in power stancing, like they added the dual weapons, like the drang hammers I'm using. But I thought the power stance system was honestly a lot better. Because you could do it with anything. And then occasionally you would get unique, like completely unique movesets. Um, if you power stance the right things, like the two majestic greatswords, that was cool. Yeah, they've they've really gone out of their way to increase the the number of moves, the complexity of a weapon with each game. It's like night and day if you go from Demon Souls to Bloodborne or from Demon Souls to DS3. Ooh, that was risky. That was a risky chug. Ah, it didn't work. Why are you putting up such a fight, Black Knight? Why are you being like this? You know what I've what I've seen a lot of people say about this level? You know what? I'm gonna save that thought for later because look at this ladder. You know what it is. You know what time it is. What a thrill. With darkness and silence through the night What a thrill I'm searching and I'll melt into you What a fear in my heart But you're so supreme
Longbow of the Dragon Riders who served the old King of One. The Dragon Riders were the old king's royal guard and great strength was demanded of them. Merely drawing this bow calls for inhuman strength. The worthy few who can master this bow, however, use it to devastating effect. That's a strange little reference to the old Dragon Riders from uh, DS2. More interestingly is how Vendrick is referred to as the old king of one. Seems like, in the end, Nishandra kind of won. History remembers Vendrick as the villain that Nishandra was, in actuality. The old king of one. When in reality, it was Nishandra who was the queen of one. Random, weak, bone wheel skeletons. I miss them being a, a heart-pounding menace. I really do. As much as I joke about I hate bone wheel skeletons, I miss how dangerous they felt in Dark Souls 1. They were monstrous problems. Like, that was what? A th that was three hits against my shield? Old Bone Wheel Skeletons, they would have just chewed through my stamina and kept going. They would have ganged up and just. chewed me up and spit me out. I miss them being that dangerous. I really do. New Bone Wheels just aren't like the old ones. Is that. Is that Lothric? Can't tell. Oh, shit. These are the new bone wheel skeletons, these things. Holy hell. I'd really rather not fight them with skeletons around. At least these ones won't respawn. Hmm. Still kind of a dangerous proposition. Forces me to hit and run a little bit more. Whoa. That was like the leaping attack from the Black Katana skeletons in Demon Souls. Except with more, with more distance. Plus they have the dual shotels, so even blocking I'm not totally safe. And every hit's a double hit, so it just takes that much more stamina to block them. Even with this really good Black Knight shield. Uh, the Black Knight Shield, I've been rocking forever in lieu of a parry shield, which honestly I would kind of prefer. But the, the, uh, not guard break reduction, that was Demon Souls' name for it. The stability on the, the Black Knight Shield is so high compared to other, uh, medium-sized shields like this. The only other shields that I could get at this point that have comparable durability, or not durability, sorry, um, uh, stability, would be great shields, and I don't feel like rocking one of those. Then again, the brilliant thing about the, the Black Knight shield is it lets you use your weapon art instead of having a berry, so it's still kind of a win-win. It's, it's just a really good shield. Finally, 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 we can disable the ballista. And it's important... Oh, look at this. More of those giants. More of those DS1-style giants. But they're all dead, so it seems like the ballista had some kind of motion recognition technology built into it. Uh, that does it for up here, though. That's why I wanted to save that ladder path for last, because it leads out to uh, the, the very top of the cliff. And then you can drop down and you're right back in the lake bed. But this is closer to the boss door anyway. Now, I'll say this. Some people prefer to leave the ballista on before doing this next part. And you'll understand why momentarily. Oh! I need to get into my safe spot. That requires him to chill out for like half a second. Uh, anytime that he is in motion, you're in danger of, uh, if you're 
next to him. So if you take a swing while he's moving, you'll usually take some damage. But this is my little safe spot. The reason that people prefer to keep the Ballista on is so that it can help them kill the giant sandworm that was hinted at before. The giant sandworm, which if you look closely, is composed of corpses. You'd see a bunch of corpses inside its, its slinky flesh. Uh, and you can also see a bunch of, like, faces making up its, its midsection. Uh, and it shoots lightning at you, for good measure. The Karthus sandworm. So people have speculated that this is Slayer. That's nonsense. Straight up nonsense. Uh, I would be more willing to accept the theory that maybe it ate Solaire. Like it just ate Solaire's corpse and absorbed his soul? Because we last saw Solaire uh, in the Demon Ruins or in Isolith. So, yeah, I'm willing to accept that the worm ate him and he's one of the many, many corpses in there. But, man. Also, with the curious placement of a couple of items, like the Dragon Rider bow, uh, I've also seen it speculated that this... one of the corpses in there, or maybe the one controlling him, may have been a Dragon Rider. Uh, and from him, we get the other Undead Bone Shard that I missed on my first playthrough, which, yeah, you get for killing the worm, plus Lightning Stake. We get a Shield of Want next to him. So we have a few things to inspect. For instance, Lightning Stake. Lost Dragon Slaying Miracle. Strikes with a stake of lightning. This tale describes the lost practices of ancient dragon slayers who found that in order to pierce the dragon scale, lightning should not be hurled as a bolt, but rather be thrust as a stake directly into the dragon's hide to be truly effective. And then we also picked up the Shield of Want. Vendrick Shield. Shield of an ancient king who was cursed by an all-consuming thirst. In the end, he was no king. The residue of the king's lust still smolders within the shield, increasing the number of souls absorbed when enemies are defeated. That is the same uh, icon. Albeit a little bit worn out as uh, Vendrick's shield. So that worm was busy, busy, busy. Lightning Stake is another thing that makes it me think less of Solaire and more of the uh, Dragon Riders. That looks like about everything that was hidden off in plain sight. Hidden in plain sight? Not really. Uh, just available out in plain sight. And since I know I got... Which is about everything important, like there could be some random Titanite shard or some bullshit around, but I don't care about that. Since I know I got everything that I need, it's off to fight the boss. So that's what I was saying, you could have beelined here directly from the bonfire, but you get the ballista and the worm in your way. A lot of people use the ballista to kill the worm. Great Swamp Cuculus. We're going to use him. Normally, I wouldn't consider summoning for a boss. I never do that in my LPs. I kind of have to here if I want something cool to happen. This is trying my patience a little bit. I haven't yet died to the old Demon King, but I have had to restart the fight for a third time now. Because Cuculus keeps getting himself killed. And I don't know if what I'm trying to do actually works if Cuculus does not survive. Um, I don't feel that guilty summoning for this boss anyway. Like, I'm doing it so it, I, an event will happen. But also, Cuculus doesn't really make or break this fight as far as difficulty goes. Uh, I would say the old Demon King is kind of a, a mid-range challenge middle-of-the-road difficulty. Uh, he's susceptible to poison, and it appears that Cuculus actually did poison him. Oh. He 
he's got a slightly expanded moveset compared to the other two fire demons we fought, but he does a couple of similar behaviors. Uh, he has a lot more fire AoEs. He summons these meteors when he uh, raises his mace in the sky. Oops, didn't roll through that. Uh, in his second phase, he generally does a lot of stuff to keep you at bay. This is actually a fun, straight-up fight with not a lot in the way of gimmicks. Ah, uh, here we go. The burning ring of fire. We did go down, down, down. We made a long descent to get here. So sometimes he'll set, he'll uh, send the, the ring of fire radiating out. I've noticed that the ring of fire doesn't tend to go past water. And there are a couple of little pools in this arena. I don't know if that's coincidence or if every time I've seen that, it's just been like because I'm outranging it right before it gets to me when I'm in the water. Uh, and then sometimes he'll contract the ring in. It's a little bit difficult to go through. And this is his last ditch effort explosion. Didn't kill. Cuculus lived. This I adore. Down to one knee, majestic. He's supposed to be this horrible demon, right? But here he is, looking like a sick beast needing to be put down. He goes down to a knee but refuses to fall, tries to fight but doesn't have the strength to. Makes you pity him. But he still goes out kind of defiantly, refusing to just fall. And his arena... All of these demons that have fallen, stray demons, Taurus demons, Capras... The last of them, the old demon king. The last among what are kind of comrades to him. Soul of the old demon king. The shriveled old demon king is now like a clump of burnt ash, but he is the last living witness of the chaos of Isolith, surrounding himself with all the old demons. <sighs> There was this interview with Miyazaki a while back where he talked about how his monsters had to have this sense of dignity. They couldn't just be grotesque for the sake of being grotesque. And one of his designers wanted to make the, the undead dragon from Dark Souls 1. Uh, he wanted to cover it in maggots. Ah, and Miyazaki went, where's the creature's dignity? You're just trying to gross eyes, people out. Show a world. This undead dragon should evoke sorrow because it was a majestic beast doomed to an endless descent into decay. Chaos bed vestiges! Traces of the tumultuous seedless seedbed that birthed the beings known as demons. Hurls chaos flame and scorches vicinity. Demons born from the fire of smoldering essence perish soon after. Main share, man shares... This rapport with the flames to this day. I'm trying to go through that too fast. Report with rapport with the flame. Great hammer, the old demon king, the weapon served since old Isolith, and is imbued with the remnants of the chaos flame. Mm, 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 mm. We can also get this now, the demon fist or the demon great axe, because we have the soul of the demon from the I one we fought before entering Smoldering Lake proper. We have a little trip to make though. Uh since Cuculus survived his uh, his foray into the Old Demon King fight. Everything about that place, everything about that place is good visual storytelling. There's Horus who goes and hollows out down there just so he won't kill Henri. There's Quelana and the Fair Lady, the tome wrapped in their gold-hemmed robe. The piles of dead demons cluing you into where you are, the attacks, and the, the the composition of the worm giving you an idea of what it is and what's in it. And then it bookends with that old demon king that ends the fight with- oh man, the way he ends the fight. Memorable layout, strong nostalgia, really good enemy placements, powerful visual storytelling, not a one-trick pony the Smoldering Lake is. It gets a bad, bad rap. This is where we initially found Cornix. So, that's the deal. If you summon uh, Great Swamp Cuculus for that fight, you get his gear. And it's the attire of Cornix in the Great Swamp. It was customary to adorn oneself with artifacts of nature. Cornix favored the use of raven feathers, 
Ravens are said to have once been Firelink messengers guiding the undead to the land of ancient gods. Uh, does this say anything? Female pyromancers, great swamp, noxious. Okay, no. That's why when I was scoping Cornix out um, last episode with the binoculars while he was talking, uh, there are a bunch of, of dead ravens surrounding his his Welcome. area. Ashen one, if thine hog he'll have us fair. Ah. You can skip Ashen dialogue one. so much faster now. This feels good. Did what? Who did what? No more bears, CC glass, or anything like that. <sighs> I really like smoldering like a whole lot. I am. <laughs> Let's give him some tomes. I'm afraid I cannot this. I can't. It is only. Oh, yeah, we already tried to give this to him, right? Ah, what have we here? By the gods. This inscription reads Quelana, the ancient deity, one of the witches of Isolith. The last of them who wandered the lands. Then she must have returned to Isolith after all. But I regret to say, I cannot accept this. Quelana's pyromancies are for witches, and must be learned from a mistress. But thank you for allowing me to peer upon such a thing. If only I were a woman. Huh. Hearing the names ah, feels what great. Have we here? A pyromancy tome from Isolith. Then you found the home of pyromancy. Brilliant! I will never curse being old and undead again. Now, now, show it here, quickly. Let us channel them together. The primal pyromancy is known only to old Master Salaman. Oh. Do not be gone for long. Is it fan service? Hell yeah. Uh, come again. But it is fan service I'm A okay with. <sighs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one, everyone.